Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here. We have a list of 20 properties coming off the weekend. So a good sized list. Uh, lots of meat to chew on in this one. And uh, speaking of chewing on things, Montreal style bagel courtesy of Savina and Vishal. So thank you guys very much for bringing some food by the office. And uh, it is always appreciated. So uh, they're actually from out of town. So if you know somebody who's moving to Milton from out of town, do me a favor and just share this site, MiltonDailyHomes.com. There's a guide in that corner there that I think would be really helpful for anybody who's trying to learn more about the neighborhoods and what you can get for your money. Now, if you're looking in the guide, you'll see that really there's nothing under two hundred thousand dollars in Milton, it's very hard, and and we've we've almost drifted in twenty fifteen to the point where something like this one on Wilson at two forty seven is the entry point to get into Milton. Uh, there are much more expensive condo towns that would go up uh, even past three hundred thousand dollars. What keeps this one low is that it only has surface parking, so there's only one parking space. If you have two cars. A better option is to get something with a garage and a parking space in front of the garage. Uh, you really may not have an option for a second space here. The other thing is the electric baseboard heat, which if you run it constantly, is going to cost you more than gas. So you have to manage it a little bit. There is a gas fireplace here and there's also a gas stove. So there are ways of heating this home where you may not necessarily need to use the, the baseboards as often as uh, somebody who didn't have the gas option there. So anyway, it's a good price point. It's priced well. It looks like it's been cared for. Even though things like the kitchen are more original, this price point has a lot of motion in it right now. Now the thing I like about this one on Maine, even though there's no photos, it's uh, more than a thousand square feet. It's a Windsor model and it's on the fourth floor. So you get these nice high, you know, 12, 14 foot ceilings that you don't get on floors one, two, and three. The last one that sold was over 340 and uh, it was quite nice inside. If this one's not as nice, at least we know that the price point is uh, a little bit lower. And I would say that, uh, yeah, this one is looking good. If you wait for the photos on some of these properties, you're at a disadvantage from the people who can recognize value and, and move forward on them a little bit quicker. So if you're looking for a two bedroom condo, this one is, I believe, a pretty good option without seeing the photos, assuming it's good inside, it's, it's in the right position in the building, that's for sure. Now 920 McTrack is, uh, is 409. It's an Amesbury or Brennan model. It's 1130 square feet, no finished basement. On your main floor, you've got one big room here, and uh, you could do a small dinette in this space, just kind of on this side where the photographer is. Some people just leave it as one big room. There is also a table, uh, space for a table in the kitchen, but you gotta be careful because there's not a lot of clearance between the dishwasher and where this is. Um, nice finishes. The cream colored cabinets are very much in style. And we're starting to see people that are getting a little tired of dark, dark, dark everything. And, uh, and so something like this, I think, uh, is going to do well. It looks like it's completely moving ready. And uh, the only thing is you're, there's one bathroom upstairs, right? So if you need two bathrooms, this isn't the one for you. And, uh, and, and just the size. It's got a good layout for what it is. I think they're going to sell it uh, at or close to this price that they're asking. I think it's in a good zone. Now Brandon is at $449.9 and uh, so you've got two driveway spots. You're also an end unit which is good uh, and you're more than 1500 square feet with nice finishes inside. The one drawback for this one that I can see is that Brandon Terrace is just off of Maple and it is very 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 close to the 401. And you'll see evidence of that, that they built a massive fence here. I don't know if that's gonna dull the sound very much. Uh, that might look like a little dog pen right there. Anyway, the uh, if you're looking for tranquil, quiet, not a lot of noise, this one is probably not the home for you. You will get the buzz from the 401. Uh, I, of that, I'm absolutely positive. Now there's no photos on Houston, it's 559, and the point I want to make with this one is, well first of all, it's 2,000 square feet, 9 foot ceilings, uh, granite counters, finished basement too, so 2,000 plus finished basement, which price wise right there, not bad, it's a one and a half car garage though, value wise that's a lot closer to a one car garage than a two. 
some of the new homes claim to have double garages they're actually like a 1.9 where you'd have to pull into the garage and then do the dukes of hazard move crawl out through your window because there's not enough space to open your door anyway the one and a half car garage does offer some advantages. The biggest advantage for me is that it allows the driveway to spread out and now you can park two cars side by side in your driveway, which for some people is the next best thing to a double car garage. If this one has good photos, I could see it potentially going for around this price. And there's really not a lot in this neighborhood that's kind of a, you know, a single car garage. There's a lot of double garages. There's a lot of townhouses. You know, you've got a little bit on bustle and so on, but uh, the bulk of this neighborhood is either a smaller house or it's larger. So it fits a nice niche. It's in the Bruce Trail School District. Now, Nakerville is 6049, and so it's a Plan 5, and Plan 5s have had such a, an interesting history in the last couple weeks. Uh, we saw one that listed at 649 sold above asking in the 650s. And right after that, one came out that I think is arguably as nice, although different setup upstairs. Uh, same as this, three bedrooms plus a loft. The other one was a four bedroom that sold in the 650s. But it's the same layout and you just have to build a wall around the loft and then you've got a fourth bedroom. It's not complicated. Probably a few thousand dollars that you pay a contractor to do that in the big picture when we're talking about $40,000 difference in price, that's huge. So this one uh, obviously is, is not nearly as nice as the, the one that sold over 650. However, 609 is kicking its tail. Uh, it, 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 the 609 one is far superior to this one on, uh, and that one's on Dice Way. Anyway, you go inside, um, you know, a bit of a reddish tone to the, the cupboards and the stairs and, and the hardwood floors. Uh, and we have seen buyers that have walked in and said, well, you know, the red thing's not really my deal. Um, laminate upstairs, which doesn't really match the main floor. But if you have kids that uh, have allergies to carpets, not having any carpets upstairs could be a, a, a plus for somebody. The street's good, uh, very child friendly. Uh, you know, you could play hockey, ride your bikes, and there's not a lot of traffic here. Uh, so I think that they priced it well. I don't think that somebody's going to come in and say, I like everything about it. I think they're probably going to say, okay, I may need to change, you know, the upstairs floor or so on. Anyway, price point for 2,200 square foot home is good though. There's single garages going in the high fives right now that are even smaller than this. You get more size plus a double garage if you just stretch a little over six. Now Mill Street's very interesting, 649, there's one on James with a much smaller lot. You could fit four of the homes on James on, uh, on this property at 90 by 137, and it's 50,000 less. Uh, it has a lot of features that I think are very uh, desirable for people who are looking for a century home. Big chunky, you know, baseboards and trim here. Uh, you know, you've got uh, even interesting effects in the floors. Uh, the kitchen's not blow your mind fancy, but if it was, it, the price point would be a lot different. So anyway, nice lot here. A couple of interesting things to know about this location. If you go onto the GIS map, you go into zoning, it's this location right here. Now, the things that if I was representing a buyer that I would definitely look at, there's a floodplain right here. All this checkerboard pattern is floodplain, which means you may or may not be able to develop when you're on the floodplain, but it doesn't look like the home is on that area. And so you might still be okay for if you want to do an addition or whatever you want to do. Uh, insurance is another consideration being on the floodplain. You'd want to check with your insurance company. And the last one is, depending on who you ask, is there's a, there, there's a potential for a rather large condo right here. Uh, so you ask the developers and they'll say, you know, it's 90% this is going ahead. You talk to a counselor and they'll say, well, we haven't even looked at it at council. And there's a few steps, obviously, before approval. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, it's it, it would be something, you're, if 41 James is for sale, there's a couple of properties. This won't be the last one in this area that's going to come up for sale because... Uh, you know, there the people, a lot of the residents around here are upset about this condo and uh, with good reason. It looks like it's, it's uh, dwarfing anything in its uh, pathway on Main Street. 
So maybe the third consideration, a bonus one that I didn't talk about, is there's a, basically a chicken slaughterhouse right on the corner here. Uh, you know, again, the smells may not be the uh, anybody's favorite. I don't know how long that one's going to last with the uh, condo development. Anyway, do your homework on the area. Make sure that you know exactly what you're getting into and the risks and the pros and cons. Uh, speak to local residents. Speak to counselors. The purpose of daily homes is not to... Uh, necessarily tell you what to do. It's to give you advice and to, to give you a sense of potentially what, what you might be looking at. Now Leargate, given the fact that this home actually exists, I don't know why they had to do uh, basically the builder's drawing of the house. There's a little courtyard here so this is not a good home if you want a big lot. However, what's nice about this one is there's this loft space above the garage that's great for a nanny suite, home office, even essentially like a finished basement for kids. And then you've got a, a very open floor plan because your garage is now separate from the house. You're not, you don't have the L shape around the garage that most floor plans do. It's separate, loft upstairs, and now you have a very wide open main floor that I think looks really, really good. Uh, but like I said, the people that don't buy this are the people that need a larger backyard. This one might have a 20 by 20 yard at the most. Now, Rolf Terrace is 839.9. We've seen a couple 3,000 square foot nice homes with either uh, green space behind or a pie shaped lot that have hovered around the $800,000 mark. Uh, inside, it looks very, very nice. And the thing that you're getting with this that some of the other sales at 800 didn't have was a finished basement. So I do think they priced it pretty well. I think that it, uh, it definitely looks like they've, they've uh, done a lot of work in here. At this price point, I can almost guarantee that everybody that comes in this home is going to say, well, I'm going to have to put granite counters in. Uh, so doing that before selling or our team favorite is Caesar Stone which can be uh, around the same price as granite, but far more durable and nice patterns to it. It's a man-made quartz, essentially. Uh, that could be an option too. California shutters, a, uh, what looks like a very well done finished basement with a bathroom. It's moving ready, it's nice, it's got a wide lot. I like it. Next up, 28th Side Road. What a lovely home. We've got about 10,000 square feet uh we have 20 acres we have a guest house on water and i posted this video up on facebook you can see the video in the virtual tour i posted up on facebook and i said this house is sexy and i had three people say i'll buy the guest house forget the main house uh tennis court a uh, beautiful you know with with exposed wood so it's it's upscale but I find it very comfortable. I love the design of this one. Uh, if you remember, maybe six months ago, there was the one on Dairy Road, right at the lip of the escarpment. I fell in love with that one. This one is pretty sweet as well. Unfortunately, we don't have any pictures of the guest house. This is the only one that you'll see. Uh, there's a little kitchenette in there too, but it, it, it overlooks water. Unbelievable. Watch the video if you have time today because it is awesome. Now, last one of the day is Mickey Court, 724.9 on the Oakville Milton list. And so this is one of my favorite models. It's called a Wild Rose by Mattamy, almost 3,200 square feet. And so you've got this covered little area in the back where you could barbecue any, any season. If it's raining out, it doesn't matter. You've got uh, covering above your head. And so it looks like there's carpet in the, in the front room. There's carpet in the family room. We have hardwood floors, uh, decent looking kitchen although not super fancy and what's nice is this one has the front living room at the like separate at the front of the house and then you also have a loft upstairs and then there's also four bedrooms here now part of the reason i bring this up is a little bit of selfish interest because we have the same model as this uh coming out probably in a couple weeks a little bit more upgrades than this one um and then we also have it's on a pie shaped lot backing on a green space and somewhere probably in the high sevens, like maybe a little under 800, I don't know. I mean, the market's changed so fast. The last time we did research, we'll probably have to do it again. But uh, if you're interested in something like that, send us an email and we'll let you really know about it before it even hits MLS. We'll, we'll let you be the first person uh, to be aware. Okay, so that's the list, big list, lots of time. I uh, hope it was helpful for you. And if you have any questions about Milton Real Estate or anything in general, 
uh, related to our industry. We'd be glad to help you. That's what we're here for. We're your concierge through the whole real estate process. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.